Stop! You scoundrel, or I'll shoot! Safe. Where have you been? Oh, here and there. Keep your hands off. Well, I'm parched and famished with no breakfast, just a morsel and a, a sip to drink. Get no wine this side of your son's mm. way. Uh, poached trout for an old trout. You've been poaching again? Oh, poached trout. Melted butter and parsley. What could be tasty? A day of all days. Mm. Oh, stop vaporising. Look slippery with your cooking, you stick of old rhubarb. Boy. Mm. I don't know how that housekeeper puts up with them. And that's another thing that makes this wholly unsuitable. Silas and her under the same roof, if you ask me. Well, whatever. Any housekeeper of Silas's earns her wages. Oh, that's for sure. And now we're taking a young boy to live in the house of a, a drunkard, a sinner, and a nonconformist. I thought Uncle Silas was your brother, Auntie B. A son of his. He's taking his time, that way. Must be rising 30. Who's this girl? All from over the county border. Ladies made at Branson House, where he was working as a boot boy. All smiles and flounces, I hear. I'm not yet 19. 
Sam's a bit too hoity, if you ask me. Silas says she's a good-looking filly, though. Talks nice. Silas is a lecher. What's a lecher like to be? Down that cellar? Of course not. I'm saving myself for all that free beer and wine and someone to fill me empty belly. <sighs> Where are those nice black boots you got when your friend Stan died? Ah, yeah. Right. There, come on. Why do we have to get all dicky dolled up like this? Do something with your hair. I don't want to look like a gentleman. Oh, look the rear. Come on. Come, come on. on, get out of my way then. See it straight. Oh, that's a real liquor. <laughs> like the tent at my school sports day. What in the name of goodness do they want with a tent? Trust Silas to think big. Well, down it all! Ah, the family! Is that my Uncle Silas? I don't remember him. He never changes. Tipsy already. Have I hit the tent? Boy, flesh and blood. Ah, Cora. Mm, my baby sister. Mm. Ah, give us a smacking kiss to be, eh? Oh. Mm. Oh. 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 Look at the state of you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself at this hour of the day. Well, that I am, that I am. <laughs> Without a doubt, eh, George? <laughs> so, there you are. Uh, come to spend your holidays with your Uncle Silas, eh, uh, young Ned? His parents call him Edward. Oh, he looks like a Ned to me. Hey, what's this? What's all this? I hope we might play some cricket. No, no chance of fancy games down here, lad. The sport here is in the woods, where the pheasants roost and my snares wait for the rabbits. Uh, we'll go and check them tonight. And tomorrow, we're going to see a widow with a nicest pair of plump white... Doves in all the county, eh? <laughs> and who's stumping up for all this, this tent and all? Marquis. We called it a Marquis. The bride's father? And her poor lass. Georgine ain't got no kin. Lord Henry and Lady uh, Esther favour every mite and morsel, every cup and crumb. And the tent? And the Marquis. Where's Abel? Upstairs, I shouldn't wonder, shaking in his britches. Abel! Oi! Time you were showing your face! Come on! Hey, half the guests are here already, and you're still a bit. I ain't in bed, I'm buttoning up my shoes. Ha ha ha! Buttoning up his courage, more like. Yeah, if he lets his lovely uh, Jordina down tonight, I know someone who's willing to step in. <laughs> oh! This is your big day. Your mother would have been proud of you. Feels crazy. Now it all getting married is the most natural thing in the world for a man and woman to do. I remember your ma when we went. Soft as a nightingale's song. Luscious as a red, rich, ripe goose guard. What's a nightingale song like, Uncle Silas? It's the most beautiful sound in the world. Go on, right. Go on, pick the wind. Most folk will be at the church already. I'll join you downstairs in a tick. Oh, a 
gone back to normal, have we? So I changed all of the time, eh? <laughs> Changing his shirt. Bag of nerves. <laughs> like any bridegroom. Jackass, if he doesn't hurry up, the bride will beat him to it. Boy, right, Ned, now you be careful up there. Don't fall off and put them trimming shears down. They're very sharp. There's a good lad. Will you teach me to be a Thatcher, Uncle Silas? Who's a will, lad? Lots of other things besides. Is a Thatcher the same as a lecher? <laughs> hey, the matter of speaking. Yeah, hey, where did you learn such a word? Aunt Tibby called you that. Oh, she did, did she, fusty old spinster? I bet she's never been troubled by a lecture, or even a thatcher come to that. <laughs> Were you a real thatcher, Uncle Silas? Real? Oh, in my time, I was a best in the county. Yeah, the world looks different from the top of the ladder. Yeah, it, may, it certainly made a difference to my life one time. Why, Uncle Silas? Well, I was thatching the roof of a shop over Dinford Way. And in the upper floor, there were a bunch of uh, pretty little uh, dressmakers. And I was getting friendly with this little creature with green eyes and bonny blonde hair. The trouble was, her boss, an old crab apple of a woman, was always hanging round. One afternoon, when the coast was clear, though, I stepped into the room to speak to this beauty. What did you talk about? Well, just say we was getting on like two soaring larks, when all of a sudden I hear old crab apple coming up the stairs. Well, there wasn't time to get back out the window, so... You hid? Big wicker basket. I jumped right inside and I pulled the lid down. Well, I could see everything, see? And all the girls were giggling and twittering. <laughs> then crab apple says to my little beauty, Elizabeth, slip off your dress and try this one on. And she did. Oh, and there I was looking at the prettiest pale pink petticoat I saw in all my born days. Yeah, well, it looks different from a, a top of a ladder, but uh, not quite as uh, different as it does from inside of a wicker basket. <laughs> so what did you do? Well, I did the only thing you could do. In them days, when you'd seen the lady's petticoat, they married her. Yeah. Hmm. She'd have been your great aunt now. She'd have lived. What's Abel doing in there? Come on, you'd go and dig him out. Dig him out. <laughs> Everybody's waiting. Don't you love your girl? Don't you want to get wed? Of course I do. Well, if she's at the church and you're not, she might die of a broken heart, like you read about in books. You, you think so?
My mother who bore me. Well, there's the date of your birthday. That's right. She died giving birth to me. God bless her. What are we standing here for? His mother would tell it all would want us to have a rollicky good time, wouldn't she? <laughs> in that state. Silas is enjoying himself. After all, she's his daughter now. Lord Esther, lady, Esther, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's said that men often marry women who look like their mothers. And though he never knew her, that's just what my Abel has done. Chosen the a woman, the spitting image of my dear Elizabeth. And for that, I'd like to salute him and his bride in my own private toast. Oh. And I'm going to sing a song. I'll be troubled before the summer's out. Mark my words. Just for her, just for Georgina, that uh, I used to sing with uh, my Elizabeth in our youth. I will be your loving man I will be a loyal man And when the sun shines bright and high Oh, I will wait outside your door Yes, I will wait outside your door Will you come to Mammy's house When the moon shines bright and clearly And I'll come down and let you in And Mammy shall not hear me No, Mammy shall not hear me Time for me to have a turn, son. Show you how it's done. Let him alone, woman. 
taking this young lad to his bed. Not a moment too soon. But Uncle Silas said I could stay up late, and we were going to set snares in the dark when everyone's gone home. He's going to teach me to be a woodsman. To be a poacher, you mean? What did I tell you? Tainting him with his bad ways already. I'll see he comes to no harm. Such a happy day. A present for me? Just that. Thank you. Be happy, girl. Be happy. with the plumpest pair of white doves, Uncle Silas said. You don't want to go listening to everything Uncle Silas tells you, right? Right. Time you was a bed, young lad. I wish I could stay here forever. Hmm. Don't forget, turn down the lamp. I will come your mammy's house when the moon shines bright and clearly and you'll come down and let me in and your mammy shall not hear me no your mammy Shall not hear me. 